what's up guys welcome back to my channel i hope you're doing amazing if you're new here hi hello my name is lydia i make mental health youtube videos over here on youtube today's video is one that you guys have wanted me to tell for a while it's also a pretty recent story like it's only happened around a month ago so it's a pretty recent story and um, to be honest when it first happened i was like i need to post this somewhere i need to talk about it somewhere i need to speak about it then i just be like do i really want to and you guys seem to want to know so i've decided fuck it i'm just gonna go ahead and tell the story so today's story time is about my worst inpatient experience to those of you who don't know me hi i'm lydia i struggle with my mental health and i have done quite intensely this year i've been inpatient six times and um, the last admission i had which was only a two-day admission funnily enough and it was the worst admission was a month ago and in that admission my fucking god the fact that i'm even making an entire video about this is ridiculous so i'm gonna have to like split this into parts so we're gonna start with why i was there so the police came to here to do a welfare check on me i'm still not entirely sure why so then like you seem a bit paranoid i'd been getting contacted by police and i just wasn't happy it was starting to fuck with me i got really paranoid and yeah i was paranoid but i, I still don't believe it warranted a hospital admission i got 136 which is section 136 the mental health it's a 24 hour hold the police can use if you are in a public place. Technically I got coerced outside so um, to them, police officers, fuck you, can't do that to someone. Then I got taken to the hospital, I was in a 136 week which was a room with a chair and a big ass glass window. One, they refused to give me my rights and this is where my complaining starts and I haven't at this point we're only on a 136 so technically I'm allowed my phone I am allowed to contact someone and I have to have my rights to be held somewhere against my will I was refused my phone I was refused my right and I was refused to tell anyone where I was refusing me them three things is illegal and then didn't get told I was being part of the section two until this staff member grabbed hold of my arm to which I responded kicking and I was like what the fuck get the fuck off me I, I would I would have walked voluntarily with them you grab hold of me I'm gonna be a bit they grabbed hold of me and I, I was like get the fuck off me give me my phone I need to talk to my solicitor I need to talk to someone no nope, you can do that when you get on the ward I was like what the fuck what what, what ward I was like oh, yeah, getting put on section 2 I'm getting Lydia while being around my arms like that being pulled back by two staff members I was like Lydia you're being detained in section 2 because we were concerned about your welfare and I was like what the fuck is this like what the fuck is this I've never been sectioned for being correct about being wrongfully accused of something and I, I can prove that the, what I accused of in Lancashire was wrong. The case against me was thrown out uh, and the person responsible for that is no longer in my life. I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below if anyone interested. But I was so pissed off that I grabbed the lanyard of one of the people holding me because I got one on my arm. What I did is I bent my arm round, got it off, pushed the one off against the wall like that and then I grabbed one that was holding there as lanyard and I got the fucking key swipe key and I went to go out the door and I was just like give me my fucking phone I didn't even want it from I literally wanted to talk to my solicitor which is my legal right under a section 2 of the mental health act you have a right to appeal and a right to have an advocate I wanted to contact my 24 hour solicitor they refused they refused to give me my rights I never actually got given my right at all at any point but we haven't even got onto the ward yet no 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 this is just in the 136 so I grabbed the key, so yes, 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 I got physically restrained, pushed on the floor, whatever. You know, you all know that story. That happened, I then got taken up well, up in the lift to the ward. Uh, when I got on the ward, I was just like, I was like, I need to contact my solicitor. Um, they refused. They made me go and sit in the kitchen. And now we're, we're going to answer the interesting part. So I wrote a review on Google. So there was rats running around the fucking kitchen. And it's not just me who's wrote this on a review. Multiple people have wrote this on a review on here and it hasn't been dealt with. It was ridiculous. So you know what? No, I didn't eat anything the entire two days that I was there. But then again, would you eat food in a kitchen that had rats in? Mm, don't think so. So I ended up going out of the kitchen because I was like, I'm not fucking sitting in here with rats running around because I, I can't deal with stuff like that. Like I love hamsters and whatever. Like I'll like hamsters are my babe, you know, hamsters are amazing. I love like actual animals, but like these are like pests coming in. And I'm not saying rats are and all that a pest like if they're the pet coins that they're, they're fine they're adorable they're cute these were the pests 
pest coming. And they were just running around this ward. And I turned around to Zaha, I was like, you need to fucking deal with that. I then walked up to reception, I was like, I want my blanket. Because I had a blanket on my head when I came in. Like, I, I put it over, I, it's one of the ones with the hood. I put that over my head and I wrapped around in it because I hadn't got a bra on. Because, like I said, police coerced me outside, so I didn't have anything. And in fairness, the two police officers who waited there with me was amazingly nice to me when I was sat in the 136 week. They waited with me until I got told what was going on. So I do appreciate that. So thank you, Met Police. I actually do appreciate that. Back to the ward. So the staff there were fucking horrible. Every single staff. Like, there's the what? There was two staff members on that ward that were decent with me. One was the doctor. <laughs> funnily enough. And the other was the male staff member that was working during the day. He was amazing, he was nice to me, and the doctor was nice to me. I got given my phone at one point, and I called Serenity, and we made a video talking about this when I came out of hospital. I'll, I'll leave a link to that in the description down below, because that vlog will explain this whole admission properly to you. So I called Serenity, and I was like, I've been put on a section two, and I was going mad. The doctor then called me in, I was like, yeah, you can have your anxiety medication if you need it, whatever. And I went to the reception to get a nurse, like, can I have my anxiety medication? I was like, one, you are locking me up illegal you're refusing to give me my rights, you're not letting me do anything. They didn't even show me where I was sleeping. They didn't even show me where I was sleeping. I got so pissed off, so wound up, and my emotions just got so out of control. And then the only way I hit my meds that I could think of in that moment was if I was to try and do something to myself, which I did. I took the shoelace out of my shoes and I tried to hang myself on a wall. I wasn't trying to kill myself, I just wanted my anxiety meds. Like, it wouldn't have been strong enough to kill me. I knew that. I wanted my meds. And I got them. I did that. But during this process, you missed, I missed out a massive chunk here. And I'm gonna have to pick, put some pictures here while I'm explaining this. So when I went and asked this nurse for my medication, no, why can't I have it? I'm allowed it. It's late, you should just go to bed. I can't sleep without my meds. No, you're not having them. I was like, what the fuck? Don't talk to me like that. Hits me there. Hit me fucking there. Of all places you could hit me. She then grabs hold of me for no reason at all. There was no reason at this point to grab hold of me. I had not been violent. I'm not a violent person. The only thing I've ever done is grab their fucking keys off them. And that wasn't even at that point. This was like, she hit me. Then she grabbed hold of me, pinned me on the floor and smacked my head off the floor. And I've still got a lump actually. Like there on my head from it. Like she fucking grabbed hold of me and smashed my head off the floor. And the doctor came up and was like, what the hell's going on here? And I then went in to have a physical check done. My blood pressure was really low, my, my pulse was really high, and I was given my medication. I was given the propanol that I'm prescribed, I was given my antidepressant, I was given diazepam, I was given zopiclone, I was given the razepam. That's a lot of sedating medication, right? I was so wound up, and then this doctor was like, is that you okay? I was like, I just got fucking assaulted, what do you think? I was like, I want my phone. So the doctor went and got me my phone, I had my phone, I contacted 101 and reported it is assault, because, well, assault and battery. And after she heard me doing this, like this nurse heard me, heard me making this report, she came up to me, grabbed my phone out of my hand, hung up the phone, pinned me against the wall and pushed me on the fucking floor. I've got so many pictures of the bruises that happened in this situation and my fucking God, anyone ever tries to get me in the hospital again, I swear to God, they would have to fucking pick me up and carry me in there because there is no way. Let's get onto the part where I tried to hang myself. Yes, they ha they stopped me, yeah. I didn't actually try to like kill myself. I put something around my neck that wasn't that time. Um, when I just wanted to get my medication. I wasn't trying to do anything. Um, this was before the doctor gave me my medication. After, like I said, after that, the doctor did give me my medication that I was allowed to have. I was then put on to one to one supervision. Next day, I then saw the like discharge committee. And guess what? Oh, uh, we'll see you again tomorrow. Didn't get told what was going on. No one gave me my right. I just need to reiterate no one gave me my right. So, day two, this same bitch, right? The same fucking bitch. I don't know how she's got a job. I really don't. This second day, I was here, I was on one to one supervision. Vision. So there was a member of staff of me throughout the day and throughout the night. I was pretty much sedated the entire time. My medication really is quite strong and it does knock me out. I think they may have increased the dose. I don't know because I'm, I'm not normally that sedated. I don't normally sleep for 48 hours, but whatever, you know. So she woke me up at around 10 o'clock, right? I can't remember exactly what she said, but she wouldn't let me have my medication again. And then the staff member that was with me went and got the management manager down from whatever, wherever it was in the building. And she was like, this girl needs of medication. She's being victimised and bullied by this staff member. Uh, I then, I was refused my phone. I wasn't allowed my phone in all this by the way. I had no phone. They wouldn't let me talk to my solicitor who would try to call me that day. They wouldn't let me call in the sick to you, know? No, no. Why would Lydia need to do that? Oh. So then we'll fast forward through the night because I slept through it, believe it or not, after I had my meds, knocked me out again. Day two. I was with the decent staff member and I went and sat in the kitchen for a bit. And my god, I had such a bad allergic reaction. I don't know what it was too. I've never had an allergic reaction that bad. My entire arms had got little like hives all up and down them. My stomach had them on, there had it, my face had it, my neck had it, my back had it, my legs had it. And I was like, what the 
fuck? I was like, I'm not taking medication I haven't had before. I'm on the same medication all the time. I was like, what the fuck is this? What are you doing? What are you doing to me? And that day, I also had the police come and take a statement from me. Within three hours of me giving that statement to the police, I was discharged. Just appreciate that. My solicitor also turned up as well because it was illegal. What they was doing to me was illegal. I'd been assaulted. I don't even know how many times. Like, you've seen the pictures of what happened. Honestly, that admission was by far the worst admission I've ever had. And fucking hell. Like, it's not even like I'm the only one who's had this experience in that hospital. They are beyond a fucking joke. Like, fucking rats running around the kitchen. I'm just not even getting to get in a sort of car. Like, she smashed my head off a fucking floor. And that could have had, like, some serious repercussions. Like, I'm not that strong myself. Like, look at the fucking size of me. I'm five foot two, right? I'm not very big at all. I'm not very strong either. She smashed my head off a lot. And while it only gave me my inner concussion, it could have fucking knocked me out. Like, worst case scenario, I could have ended up in bloody A&E. And it just, it baffles me that this woman was able to do that and then had other staff members defending her and then when the doctor saw it he was like what what's going on the doctor seemed more confused than i was and it was it was so that admission was so fucked up right it was the most fucked up admission i've ever had i've been admitted for some weird things in the past well this was the most fucked up fucking thing ever like I can live without having a phone. All I wanted was to speak to my solicitor, which is my legal right. I would have appreciated having my rights given to me at some point, which I didn't have. I just, like, when I gave a statement to the police, I was like, they haven't even given me my rights, yet they're holding me in hospital. How is that fair? I was like, they can't. I was like, I know the difference between reasonable force and assault. I was like, I'm not stupid. The officer took my statement and said, do you want to press charges? And I said, yes. The thing is with me now, I used to be very afraid of doing anything, like taking legal action against people. Now I'm not, I don't give a fuck anymore. Like if someone fucks with me, I'll fuck with them but if you fucking hit me and beat me against the floor expect me to respond like i just don't get it it's like i still can't believe the allergic reaction i don't know what that was from that was really fucking weird i i don't know what it was from it's not like i ate anything there i had my regular medication that i i, I literally have like there i have my medication <laughs> Worst admission of my life. And I've had a lot of pretty shit admissions. This was the fucking worst. And do you know what I'm gonna say? If you guys want me to add this to my book, which is the second edition of my book, which has been released the end of the year, let me know in the comments down below. And if you don't know, I have a book on Amazon. It's in the description down below. You may wanna buy it. First edition is only gonna be available for a limited period of time. And um, it's my child. It's nothing professional. I wrote it myself. It's my baby, you know? Um, second edition is coming out at the end of the year. It's got loads of new chapters, loads of new everything. And if you don't know who I am, hit the subscribe button because I make story time videos. I make vlogs. I talk about my life. And crazy shit happens, apparently. Like getting assaulted by a mental health nurse. Bashing my head in against the floor. I got called a stupid white bitch as well. A fucking racism. I can live with it. Like, it, it sounds like that. I can live with name calling about that. I think, I can't remember what, she was just, she went after me. But this bitch went on a fucking witch hunt. It was a terrible admission. And do you know what, on all though, my opinion on the West London mental health team isn't actually bad. Like, the crisis team is actually amazing. Never thought I'd say that sentence. The community team assessed me and I agree with their, their thing. I don't really want to do the therapy thing, but I mean, what's the point in arguing with them? May as well give it a go, hadn't I? The crisis team here have my approval. Inpatient facilities down here so far. I hope there aren't any more admissions either, but if there are, I can tell you this now, I would, I'd just leave London. I'd go anywhere but there. Like, they'd have to physically pick me up and put me in there. They kind of dragged me in there anyway. You know, I'm, I got fucking assaulted by a nurse. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you flip the notification button on. Check out the community tab. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions or things you'd like me to answer or just want to have a general conversation. Make sure you go follow me over on Twitter and TikTok. They're my main social medias. I also post a bit on Instagram now. I'm becoming social media active. Hey, what <laughs> the fuck's wrong with me? Yeah, it's been a a long day. I say that I've been in bed all day. I haven't left this bedroom today at all. I'm gonna have my meds and I'm gonna get to sleep because I'm tired. That was right on cue. That was on cue. <laughs> right, I'll see you guys soon. I hope you're having an okay day and if you're not I hope it'll get better soon. Like I said links as always are in the description down below. Peace guys. I missed. <laughs> I fucking missed. I got it that time, thank god, yay!